Ooh, another dramatic start. I'm loving these recent episodes of Kaguya. <laughs> Your insecurities be like... What show am I watching? <laughs> What's your hobby? I collect ears. Take a look at my ear collection. Alright, we're in the student council. Kozue Makihara wants to have fun. <laughs> all social events in life, all social events just end up being dating engagements. And the second half, seven minutes in heaven. Oh, okay, immersive 3D sound experience. You know Miko doesn't know how to plug her headphones in. I went to a haunted house in China once, and it started out in a really great way. Like, it was just layers upon layers of curtains, or like, you know, the, the drapes that hang over a car wash or whatever. And so you have no visibility at all. And it's at the very beginning, I don't know what to expect from the haunted house, so I'm just going through these things, and there's like ominous music playing. Uh, I just know that eventually I'm going to part one of these things, and like something's going to pop out at me. And finally, I like open the, the last blind, and there was a janitor's closet, and an announcement came on saying that, we had gone the wrong way. <laughs> and that was the peak. <laughs> the rest of it was sort of like, whatever. It's people jumping out at you. And you know they can't touch you. You know what would be exciting is if like you made a deposit on the haunted house. And if you don't get touched, you get your money back and it's free. And every time a zombie touches you, you lose money. That would be scary. Hire me, <laughs> student council, <laughs> for all your horror events. What is the sound we're hearing? Is the sound of abs? Oh, okay. <laughs> Right, she does have this kind of audio experience. I like this can-do attitude in these groups. What the hell? That tripped me out a little bit. Oh, I see. It's an, an ASMR horror event. Well, that's just terrifying. Her hair could catch fire. She's enjoying this a little bit too much. Oh, wow, that just came through. <laughs> They're actually, like, doing it in the show. That just came through with my headphones. <laughs> this really is an a ASMR episode. What am I watching? What are they doing? She's gnawing at her ear. Is this fan service? Are we fan servicing right now? <laughs> I don't even know. Getting your ears sucked. Oh my god, this is, this is so weird. This is so weird. Yeah, is this still the event? Take two. There was one time I did a scene where I had to eat donuts. Or specifically, I had to take a bite of a donut. It was a jelly donut, and I couldn't eat them for like... I don't know, the next five, ten years. But this is why we're really here. This is why I came to this episode. This date. Sometimes this backfires though. It's definitely a thing, right? Like people think you take a date to a horror movie or something terrifying and that's somehow going to be a bonding experience. And I think the thinking behind it is that your body sort of can't differentiate between chemical states. So adrenaline gives you the impression that you, you went through something significant. So it's a bonding event in that way. But I feel like it doesn't always work out the way you want it to. In high school, I went with a date. It was a girl I really liked. I should have, <laughs> in hindsight, read the cues because she wanted to see Finding Nemo. But yeah, I mean, not having the, the greatest intuition stuck pretty hard to the horror movie thing and we saw 28 days later and it wasn't good like i feel like it just grossed her out and then we both were sort of reeling from the movie after it and then it just the day just ended nope it's functioning exactly the way they want it to of course it's these two. Oh no when she witnesses it oh no oh no they ruined it they ruined the whole thing what is the point Oh no! I really hope the date doesn't end there. I really want to see where this goes. Chika Fujiwara wants to unmask. Yeah, get in line. <laughs> Very good job reading between the lines. She has a very unique perspective on him. 
Useless thing of volleyball, yeah, exactly. Nope. Yep. This is the part where Fujiwara falls in love with Miyuki. Yeah. I mean, telling her not to do it is going to make her want to do it more. Also, you can't talk people out of liking people. You tell people their negative traits and they just spin it into something beautiful. Laziness becomes being a free spirit. Being a jerk means you're a, a troubled soul that needs to be rescued. And he's going to be the man now. He's in his element. <laughs> how charming. Yeah, show her how incompetent you are. But knowing Yuki, he's going to take this very seriously. I will not rest until I'm good at juggling these bean bags. Dodge the trap, Miyuki. No, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> he's trying. He's not even, he's not even leaving his hands. <laughs> oh no! Damn, you just walked yourself right into that. Wait, what? It's a very odd juggling strategy, but he's doing it. Wait, what? No, he's practiced. <laughs> oh, we got family history in the beanbag juggling. You've let everyone down, especially your grandma. Damn, look at this guy. Now ask him to confess to a woman. <laughs> oh no. And then she fell into a hole from which there was no escape. A hole of longing. <laughs> No middle school boys will cut it. No middle school boys can compare. They're just all so childish. He'll survive. <laughs> this girl's not your enemy. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! Oh no! Speaking of insecurities. Yes, it's the spirit that men want. What is with you people? <laughs> Why? Why couldn't there have been girls like this when I was young? No one ever told me that girls like grades. That would have changed everything. I mean, I got really good grades in elementary school, but all girls ever said they wanted was Jonathan Taylor Thomas. I'm really dating myself for this episode. <laughs> yeah, the looks too. The visuals don't hurt. I mean, he's got a pretty good read on him. Kaguya knows it. Yeah, no, she's got it. Yep. I like how they become they became friends over their shared interest. They both live in the same hole. There you go, that's a healthy. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, but I want to know about the date, though. What about the date? They both still did it. I mean, but you don't really want it to go down that way, right? I don't- she doesn't feel sorry for him. And she likes him as a person. She's just having a good time. <laughs> oh, this is the heart. This is a heart. Eternal love. Wow, this is so much better than being trapped unwittingly in a locker. Ooh, look at this guy. This is awesome. Speaking of momentum. Wow, and in public too. Is this really happening? I feel like this is gonna... Please let this be really happening. Don't turn into a fantasy. This is so unbelievably huge, if real. It really happened? Oh my god, that was amazing. Oh my god, it does on so many levels. Thank you for delivering, Kaguya-sama. I mean, first of all, I think she took it really well. She's not thinking about him in the same terms she's thinking about her, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Her running away was definitely not rejection. It was like emotions, which I think is overall positive. But way more importantly than that, way more important than the outcome of this, or whether or not they get together, is the balls that that took. Especially thinking about his backstory and his history of like public humiliation. Just to straight up give her the 
the hard cookie without much hesitation in a room full of students. And he knows what's going to happen as a result of that. He knows the implications. I feel so proud. <laughs> I feel so proud of him. I don't see the problem. What's wrong? Right. He has a little bit of a mood killer. Does that mean we got Miyuki on board? <laughs> so over the top. <laughs> and also because we, we care about him and want him to be happy, right? You never know. I feel like he has a huge prayer with what he just did. Oh no. I think the show and Ishigami himself have already addressed a lot of them. It's kind of in progress right now. And I think that one of the biggest ones is uh, responsibility avoidance. And also there's a certain framing of things in a negative light based on his own fears and insecurities. But honestly, it feels like a different character to me now than he did at the start of the show. Like radically different. I don't think I had any expectations of him at all, to be honest. He's been one of the brightest points of character development in the show, I think. I also don't think this needs to end in a relationship. It, it just needs to not be negative. Even if she comes back and is like, let's go on a date, you know, let's hang out. He'd be over the moon. And honestly, I feel like they might not even need to mitigate his feelings as much as they think. I mean, he'll be dejected if things don't go well. But I think if he's really looking at himself and looking at what happened, and maybe maybe he can't, but if he can, there's a certain satisfaction to be got out of this just by having done it. He would really be beating himself up if he failed because he hadn't taken a shot, if that makes sense. I feel like that just hurts so much more than knowing you put your best foot forward and it and it not working out the way you wanted it to. It's more of a superficial wound, you know? I, just, I didn't get what I want. If he had acted in a way that confirmed all his worst fears about his own weaknesses, that would sting. But I don't know, I think he outperformed himself. He gets in his own way. Yeah, that's so true. Indeed. I feel like it already has, in a way. That rings true to me. Oh no! <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so many hopes riding on this. Oh no, is it gonna end here? Oh no, oh no. I need more! Damn it. <laughs> I like what Chika said about how her accomplishments give her confidence. I feel like I've talked about this a lot, but it's an important concept to me. And it comes from, I think, struggling with this for a while. You know, I think that my, my approach for a long time to having a solid self-identity was trying to think myself into it or trying to kind of rely on a faith in, you know, some kind of intrinsic value that I had as a human being. And I think that's a really good thing to focus on and to work on, but I think it's hard to get enough sustenance from that in a vacuum or to focus on that alone. I think one of the ways that falls apart is that if you're looking to differentiate yourself and you're trying to find value, I firmly believe in the value of all human beings. And I think that that value comes from potential, but potential by itself kind of needs to be realized and i think one way that that thought quickly devolved for me is well if i'm special by virtue of birth then so is everyone else which means in a certain key sense and in a certain way that i'm looking to find value i'm not special at all because everyone else also has that and being born wasn't of my choosing so what does that really mean i think the other half of that that is not talked about as much is something to be found through through action and i think a really cool thing about it is it doesn't have to be anything monumentous it has to sort of be just at a level where what you do meets or exceeds your own expectations which is a lot more manageable you know the the anchoring for what makes an accomplishment is not being the best at something it's doing something and looking at yourself and liking what you've done or liking what you see i mean this applies directly to ishigami because i think what would have stung the most is as i said if he didn't get out of his own way you know if he ended up doing the exact thing he hated about himself for doing, he would feel terrible about the outcome of this day. Accomplishing things that make you feel good about what you've done ends up being more than just the accomplishment of that thing. It's sort of proof of capability. It's proof of positive change. It's proof of achievement. And I think that has a way of just softening the edges of you know, the anxiety that surrounds life. It's like, okay, well, this was a challenge and I performed adequately in that challenge. Now I know it's possible. I think one of the worst kinds of existential hell is 
is not really feeling like anything can be changed or there's anything to do that would be gratifying. There are certain things that I've done that are not really groundbreaking, but made me feel good to do. And I feel like it's something that once I've, I've obtained, you know, once I've gotten that feeling, it becomes a permanent part of me. It becomes a building block of my self-identity. And it's something I can always look to. And there are so many benefits, like there's a momentum to it, first of all. You know, if you if you can accomplish something that feels good, then, you know, you can aim at the next thing. And, you know, now you have a taste for it and also an understanding you can do it. Getting there probably contain critical lessons for growth. And I think in a sense that suggests an actionable plan. You know, it's like, what would be the things that I could accomplish that would make me feel really good? And then being really careful to make sure that they're in my control. They're actionable. I don't know. But as I've said, I think that whatever happens, whatever the result of this is, this was a huge win for Shigami. Like, it's just so exciting to watch him actually make this confession. The rest is sort of not about him. The rest is kind of on Tsubame. Early Ishigami would have rationalized away why he didn't even need to do this because it was stupid, you know? It's just really amazing character growth.